Here we go. Today I'm driving the 2024 Land Rover Defender V8. But this is a different V8. And that's what we're gonna talk about it. Let's roll! Check this out. We got the keys to the 2024 Land Rover Defender P500. This is the V8 version. You're probably wondering, wait a minute, Sam. Didn't you just review the V8? This is not the same V8. You see, this year they're offering something that is a bit more affordable, yet not as aggressive, as crazy as the one that we had last year, which I also did a drag race. And today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this. But before we do that, Special thanks goes to our great friends at Bud's JLR. You guys know that I work with them. They're a great dealership. Without them, we couldn't get cars pretty much. It would be very hard to get these things early in Canada. They are a Jaguar Land Rover dealership located in Ontario, Canada, specifically in Oakville. And my friend Mark was kind enough to get this thing ready clean for today's video. Don't forget to check out the link in the description below if you want to take this for a test drive. But for now, let me show you everything you need to know about this new trim for the V8 Defender. It is no secret that I absolutely adore this machine. I've said this many times in my reviews. I love the new Defender. In fact, when this thing first came out, I was obsessed and I could not wait to drive this thing. In my opinion, this is the best SUV you can get for the money. Specifically, a luxury SUV that can do both on-road and off-road. And this year, Besides the standard V8, the P525, they're including a new trim, a little bit more affordable and detuned. It's called the P500. In this case, we have the SE package. And today, that's what we're going to talk about. What this offers, how different it is from the P525. Let's start first with the exterior. Well, the first thing you notice is that this has this beautiful gray metallic paint, which I absolutely love. You still get that Defender letters across. So in terms of design, it's very similar. The next thing you notice is that you got all this beautiful finish at the front for the bumper for that off-road capability. I love the headlights in this thing. And with this package, we get these massive wheels. Now, in comparison to the P525, which is a crazier version, this has a different setup. So in this case, these are the 22 inch wheels, but these are not the performance tires that that one comes with and also not the performance brakes that you get with the P525. These still are a big caliper, six pistons in the front, the massive rotors as well, but not the same performance level that you get with the P525, which of course is a little bit more money than this. You're still getting an air ride. You can actually see the air ride suspension right there. Moving on to the side profile, I believe the V8 version has that badge that says V8. This doesn't. It has the Defender uh, vent on the sides. And I believe the V8 as well had a badge on the side that said Defender V8. So they knew it was the V8 version of the 110. And what's even more important is the fact that the 130, yes, that massive three-row SUV, which again, one of my favorites, that one is coming this year with the V8 version too, which we'll be reviewing soon once it lands at this local dealership. Moving on to the second door, similar design. 
But in this case, with the SC, we're still getting this beautiful interior, the rubber mats. This is one thing that I love about this car is that you can essentially wash the interior nice and easy, which comes very handy. Hence why I think this is a better version of the G-Class. I know you're going to argue with me, the G-Class is a different level, blah, blah, blah. I think this is a better value overall. It's a smart decision to buy this over a G-Class in many ways because it can do a lot of things better than the G-Class. The next thing we're gonna talk about, the V8 comes with the quad exhaust tips in the back, similar to the P525, but it doesn't sound as aggressive. Take a listen. Of course, it wouldn't be a Defender without the beautiful spare tire in the back, which this comes with, covered nicely. This plastic around the tire and the leather finish. Then we jump into the tailgate area, open like you would with a Defender and not standard like you'd see in most cars. This is a different design. It opens on the side, nor up or down. Now, lots of cargo space in this thing. Again, that continues with that rubber mat all around, which I absolutely love. Easy to wash, easy to clean. Now, let me show you something cool that you probably didn't know about the Defender. Check this out. How cool is this thing? If you need to get access to the second row to get everything flat so you get more space, look at this. This is brilliant, brilliant engineering. Easy access and it's flat all around. So now you got yourself a lot of space to carry a lot more things. It's amazing what you can do with this beauty. Absolutely love this option. Now with the SC package, you get a couple of extra features on the outside. Like for example, you have the door handles, which are uh, keyless entry, and you have a button over here, you press that, and then it locks the vehicle if you have the key with you. That's an easy way, of course, easy to understand. If you press the button over here, it locks the vehicle, but not just that, it folds the mirrors, which again, it's a great option. So let's talk about this. So what do we have in here? Essentially it's the same engine. The difference is the detuned. This is the five liter supercharged V8. Absolutely love this thing. But this one in comparison to the 525 makes only 493 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque. It's equipped with an eight speed automatic transmission. This is a ZF automatic transmission, which we know is fantastic. Of course, it comes with adjustable air rides, which you can control based on driving modes. And if you want to take this off road, the amazing thing is that this it's supposed to be slightly better also in fuel efficiency compared to the 525 because it makes less horsepower but it's essentially the same engine i believe the 525 makes about 518 horsepower this only makes 493 which is not a massive difference but in terms of money value you're definitely going to get somehow a better value with this i think if you don't want that crazy uh, 525 model and with that engine, this thing is supposed to do 0 to 60 in about 5.6 seconds, which I think is quite impressive. The 525, it does in about 5.4 or 5.3, depends on the day and how you race it. But it's not too far off in comparison to this model. The difference is that that does have better tire setup, better suspension system, and most important, better brake system. show you the inside first to start with the passenger side of course you get power seats 
different adjustability. You can control the bolster adjustment and most importantly the seats and of course beautiful rubber mats. This I believe is the oyster color, like light oyster style. It kind of looks a bit like a white, a mix of whites and just slightly bit milky, which I do love this. Now one thing you notice with the Defender, it's got so much space. You got space in here, the USB-C port at the top, the handles at the top over here, more handles on this side. This is kind of built like a Lego style, but just more premium, which I absolutely love. And then you have more space underneath here that you can use for your lunch box. And there's more space in here, two cup holders. And this does come with this package with a mini sort of cooler in the center here. I'm not cooling my bag there. I just left it because I had no other place to put it. But you get these uh, two levels with one button in here. You press the button and it comes with two levels. So in case if you want to get something cool, maybe the baby size. And then on top of that, there's a wireless charging pad, which I believe my phone fits in perfectly. Look at that. I love this. And what's even more important is how this thing is designed. Like I love it has that rugged interior, but at the same time, luxurious, which again, is something to appreciate with the uh, Land Rover. The passenger side comes with three memory seats, yes. And with this package, it is equipped with the Meridian surround system, which I think is a great audio system. Not one of the best in class, but it does the job just fine. It is a bit premium overall. Then we jump into the back side, door panel, very similar to the front one with the metal grill here for a metal finish, mostly not metal uh, quality. And then you have the door handle, nice and grippy, beautiful build quality overall, rubber mats here, which you can, of course, wash on the inside. There's a net on this side here. There's a door handle to get in because this thing is high off the ground, especially if you adjust the suspension system, which is air powered. Then moving on to the center, we have the climate unit here with the two USB ports underneath. This one, you control these knobs for the temperature. And I do believe you get heated seats in the back with this package. It also comes with a beautiful panoramic roof all the way across, which gives nice lighting on the inside, in case if you need a bit of more brightness. And in the center here, we have an armrest with two cup holders. As you saw previously, you can fold these seats 60-40, so you can fold those two together and this one separately. Now, jumping onto the driver's side, before we do that, this comes with blind spot assist which is nice and handy. And these mirrors that you see on the sides at nighttime, they dim so that you can see better, which is a great feature. Driver's side, of course, still get three memory seats uh, option like you would with the passenger side. There's a child lock at the top, easy access. And one thing I love about this in comparison to the Range Rover is that they're not up here, they're actually here which I think it's a little bit easier to access. On top of that, if you pay attention carefully, this thing here, it's quite interesting. You see, it blocks you from opening the actual hoods by mistake, which I'd say many people wouldn't. But anyways, then there was a door handle on the side here when you're trying to get in. Moving on to the driver's side, power seat, of course, all the way around, similar to the passenger side. Then let's jump inside and let me give you a quick tour here. Let me start it up. Now, digital screen in the center for the cluster. We also have a heads up display with this package, which shows the RPM when you put it in dynamic mode. And then of course this opened automatically as I got in. Into the center here, we have the standard shift knob. And with this one, you have the sport option. You can also shift yourself. It doesn't have any pedal shifters, which I believe the 525 did come with. And then put into park, it goes automatically into the center. That's quite nice, right? Then moving on to the climate unit here, we have the fan speed temperature. This is something you have seen before. There's ventilated seats and heated seats with this package with the uh, SE, which again is nice and handy. Then you have these buttons here for the driving mode. So for driving modes, we have a few options. If we get into the middle here into the screen, you got your uh, basically comfort mode, there is eco mode, and there is a dynamic, which is essentially your sport mode. But this doesn't change the cluster the same way as the 525, which is a bit more red uh, style, more sporty style. This is, I'd say, a little bit more detuned, and there is the off-road options that this thing comes with, which, again, makes this the perfect off-roader and on-road as well. In case if you want, you can go straight into sport mode, but we're gonna keep it for now into comfort. Moving on to the center, we have this massive screen, which is something you'd seen in other Range Rovers, uh, easy to use. This is a new PVI, there's a weight sensing. Even with this package with the V8, they managed to make that engine sort of bulletproof for the off-road experience. You have the air quality because 
You want to make sure you know that the air quality outside is clean, is pure, and it also shows you the levels. Look at that. Then you have the climate option as well, but this one is pretty cool, right? You can purify, so you get a bare air clean on the inside, eliminate the CO2, then we have the ion one, like just the whole experience into a Defender, which you can also take off-road while doing this. It also comes with 360 camera, if you look carefully, and there's a 3D option as well. Look at this, beautiful, clear all around. Absolutely love that. Then you have the off-road camera option, which again goes into 360, and then you have the towing, which shows you the back sides in the sort of like bird's eye view style at the top. So that way you have better visibility all around when you're towing. Because this is equipped with the air ride, you can control everything from here. You can adjust the height, you can do access height in this case, which basically takes the car all the way to the uh, bottom parts. And then you have the normal height and then the off-road experience, which increases the height of the vehicle all the way to the max. So you essentially have three levels. I usually keep it in access height because it gives it that, that sort of like low uh, ride, low drive style, a bit more comfortable. You're not too high off the ground and gives you great clearance all around. Now, the next thing is to talk about how this drive and how it compares to the, uh, the P525. And most importantly, how much are you going to pay for this thing? Let's talk about this beauty. Oh, oh, oh. Love this car. Adore this car. Price-wise, what are you going to pay? Well, there are two trims essentially for the V8. There's the P500, which is the one we're driving, and there's a P525, which is the one that I drove, I believe this year. I can't remember. I drove so many cars this year and last year. Anyhow, they're both supercharged V8s. The difference is that this one is detuned, which means that it's going to cost you less. So how much less? In the US, this comes with a package that's called the SE, and it starts at $93,000. In Canada, this starts at $124,000, which is absolutely insane in terms of price difference. I'm not sure why Land Rover does that. In the US is cheaper, but I do know one thing that the Canadian one comes with extra features. In the US, you have to add them to get to this level. The P500, 525, in the US starts at about $112,000. In Canada, it starts at $145,000. Now, why does this trim exist, you're wondering? Well, simply put, it is a bit more enjoyable, not as rough and not as powerful as the P525. And it's also about $21,000 cheaper than the P525, which Again, that kind of makes sense to have this thing at that price level because it just makes it a little bit more affordable. In fact, I was looking for one myself and then I look at the lease and I'm like, it was a bit pricey for my budget to be honest. So this might be slightly a better ver version of it, which oh, I love the V8 on this thing. The first time I picked that up was like just absolutely shocked. And another thing I noticed with this is that this doesn't get that Alcantara or suede finish steering wheel with paddle shifters, which is something that you get in the P525. So there is some differences, hence why the cost difference. But it's still a V8 on both, which again, it's not something to complain about it. I love this. I genuinely love this. And I think I just gotta wait a little bit more, just some of these become a little bit used and then I can afford them because right now it's just a bit much for me to be honest to dump all that money. I'm not that rich, but I adore this and having it with a V8 makes it even better. Now, why do I say this is a better version of the G-Class? You're probably thinking, Sam is absolutely insane to think that. Hear me out. Is a lot less expensive, one. Two, I believe this still qualifies for a tax write-off in the US for that five, 6,000 pounds uh, weight rate that they have in the US that you can write off as a business expense, blah, blah, blah. In Canada, it doesn't apply. So if you're watching those videos on the internet, it does not apply to everyone. So please keep that in mind. Which means this is still a great value, which means you can still write it off. You can beat the crap out of this thing anywhere and it will take it no problem. The G-Class has really expensive parts 
this on the other hand on the outside is built for off-road so you can take this on road off-road anytime no problema this is the best part about this and it's also a lot more let's say comfortable on the inside and a lot more roomy I've been in a G-Class it feels smaller than this this is large on the inside it also has more cargo space than the G-Class which means that if you are a family member this is going to come in real handy for extra space you get that spare tire in the back you can make this look a lot better than a G-Class in my opinion if you get the right color the gray I'm not a big fan I'd get something a bit more dark put a beautiful set of wheels on this thing 22 inch and make it look absolutely gorgeous and just and just an absolute beast overall and with the V8 it just makes total sense forget about the G-Class this is the one it's got everything off-road on-road power it doesn't matter about speed you can tune this engine it's a supercharged v8 to get amazing horsepower 0 to 60 it supposedly doesn't 5.1 but i'll tell you about 5.3 5.4 to be more realistic absolutely love this thing there's nothing to complain about it i adore this you know this if you watch my channel i'm a sucker for these it's one of those cars that i have nothing negative to say about never ever i love it i adore it that's it that's pretty much it